Hi folks, today's video is going to be a bit of a comparison around Photo Prism and PWGO. Both are very good self-hosted photo album managers and they're also both open source. They could be considered really as alternatives if you wanted to move your photos off of things like Google Photos or Flickr or Apple Photos or something like that. And the reason why I did the video was I'd already started using PWGO a little while ago and then I saw a video showing Photo Prism and it looked actually very, very impressive. So I've just spent a couple of days having a look at whether I wanted to convert or change my photos across or not. And I'm probably not going to, but that's also why I decided to do the video because although there's no sort of real hands down winner here, they both do some very similar stuff and they also do some stuff quite differently. So which one you'd want to use really depends on your own needs. So in this video, I thought I'll contrast then the main similarities and the differences that I've seen. And I'll also show what they're like to view as a public viewer. And then I'll do a tour around the interfaces as a logged in admin and also show their settings menus. And then I'll just finish off by touching on a couple of aspects around maybe the installation of both of them. So let's just have a look here. First of all, Photo Prism, this is what their website looks like. And one of the things that's going to be immediately noticeable there is the AI powered photos app for the decentralized web. So obviously AI being artificial intelligence, which really means algorithm. But that is one of their particular strengths, I must say. So, you know, that is something that if it's something that you're after, then it might do a little bit better than than Photo Prism at this stage. And obviously you've got a lot of the other similar functionalities. This shows what the mobile app would look like or on mobile. And then on the PWGO site, again, you can manage your photo library with PWGO. And they've just got a couple of other options. What stands out with PWGO is this part here around the high volume. They can actually work very well or host very well with thousands and thousands of photos without any sort of real noticeable impact on the resources from the hosting platform. And as I did point out just now, both are actually open source. Another key thing maybe on the PWGO site is before I step off it is up here under extensions. That, that is actually something worth having a look at because a lot of things are not necessarily by default built into PWGO. There are a good 350, 400, 500 different extensions, some of which are quite new and some of which are a, a bit older. But these dramatically extend the functionality of the hosting site so don't forget to have a look at them as well before sort of making any final decisions so i think let's have a look next really at the some of the similarities that i've picked up Ooh, apologies for the different size font over there as i've already pointed out both really are open source they can both be self-hosted and they've also got both options for cloud hosting where you can pay them to host for you then you know their key focus being albums, photos, and videos. A slight difference here maybe with PWGO is they've also got sub-albums. So you can embed albums, or group albums, should I say, together, which is very, very convenient to you know, a cleaner interface. Both have forms of likes and favorites, so just call them something different. Both have got slideshow capability, display of XF data. Both have geotagging and map view, and we'll see just now that those maybe look slightly different as well. Then both also have forms of labels or keywords. One difference here and maybe what accounts for a much slower import time on Photo Prism is it does an auto labeling. So it's trying to recognize things in the photos like color, faces, buildings, those sort of things. And it's auto labeling a lot of what it does when it imports. On PWGO's side, you can batch update those. There is also, of course, a plugin that will make suggestions for you for keywords they call it keywords you know some prefer a more manual control anyway over placing keywords so i'm not sure with pwego you can certainly do individual edits of every photo but you can also batch for example for the city or for if everything's relating to a mountain or whatever you can just update it all in one go so it's not too much of an issue but there is a difference a bit of a difference there both do search and then on the installation side, both have got Docker install, which is quite nice. 
Interestingly, on PhotoPrism, their Docker can look a little bit more complex at first if you look at the config file, but really if you boil it down to what you really need to do and change in it, it's not too complicated. It's actually fairly simple. But interestingly also, they've got a plugin for Open Media Vault 6, and that is literally just activating that plugin, and I'll show you the setup screen a bit later on. Just a few settings you change, and you've actually got PhotoPrism up and running under, under Open Media Vault very, very easily, even if you don't have Docker or anything else installed. So there's maybe a bit of a plus there. They've also got a digital ocean image that you can just select and actually run it under digital ocean as well. So there's another interesting option, or because you can install it in a VPS with Docker. The Wego side, Docker, as I've mentioned already, you've also got an option to do a manual install, uh, copying and building the files. And I have also previously used it under a cPanel hosting installation where I could just click the script file, it installed it, you just configure it, and you sort of up and running really with that as well. So nothing dramatically different there really, but a lot of similarities. And here is where the differences start coming in. So the first thing that struck me about PhotoPrism when I looked at it was, wow, okay, it's got a very nice modern interface and it's all very touch and slide and all that sort of thing. And that includes things like its search and its map view. So that is something that will strike you quite quickly. PeeWeeGo is a lot older. So yes, it looks a bit dated looking, but it has got a couple of different themes that you can install, which dramatically change its whole layout and look as well. So it's not a complete minus. If you like more control over your theming and different themed looks and so on, it's also something worth thinking about and it's not completely out of date. Then as I mentioned a little bit earlier, PhotoPrism uses quite a lot more resources, specifically when it's doing imports. It's doing a lot of heavy processing. So I've mentioned here, it has got a slow import, and I mean, you know, it does take quite a long time if you're importing 150 photos or something more into an album. Here we go, definitely much lighter resource usage, and it's got a much quicker and faster import as well. So again, on, on big numbers, that can make a difference. Then, as I also mentioned, the facial recognition aspect, or I mentioned the artificial intelligence algorithm. On PhotoPrism, it's doing facial recognition. So it really out of the box is doing a lot of recognition of faces. You've only got to give it the name of a few faces, different faces, that is, should I say. And it's already helping with the recognition around that. So particular strength there as well. On the PeeWeeGo side, you do have a plugin called Mugshot, which allows you to do manual face and object tagging. And I'll just show that as well a bit later on. But an advantage of that possibly is it's not limited only to face. So if you want to point out or label specific objects in a photo or highlight them or something, you know, draw attention to them or by labeling or something. You can also use Mugshot's manual tagging for that as well. Then on PhotoPrism, it's also got a built-in duplicate detector. And it's got things like if you're looking at photos, you can like photos. On the PeeWeeGo side, a little bit of a difference here again, possibly. They've got things like ratings, star ratings, one, two, three, four, five, by viewers. There's also commenting, which I don't see on PhotoPrism at all. So you can have, in my case, I'm only limiting it really to family. Anybody can view my, my photos, but you'll notice you can't comment unless you're a logged in user. You've got collections. Users can define their own collections. So you can select a whole bunch of different photos and create a collection of your own to view in PeeWeeGo. You've got favorites here versus likes over there. And you've got very powerful batch editing. There is some batch editing or selection on PhotoPrism, but it, it's very, very basic. Batch edits on PeeWeeGo are really, really powerful. There's a lot of things you can do with it as well. So that's another aspect there. PhotoPrism, what you see is what you get, really. So I, I've put that there. It doesn't have extensive plugins or any form of plugins, in fact, that I can see at this stage. But I think it's still under development. So maybe you know, expect some more functionality. But PeeWeeGo, a good 350, 400, 500 plugins. And notable ones are things like the Photosphere Viewer. That is something that PhotoPrism doesn't have at all. Photosphere will actually allow you to view those 360 degree Photosphere photos. There's also a very nice panorama viewer. 
And also specifically why I actually went for it was it's got a plugin for Flickr imports. So what that will do actually do is it allows you to import your entire collection from Flickr as albums with the tags, titles, the whole lot. That to me was a pretty, pretty powerful feature. I had a good 11 or 12,000 photos on Flickr. And over a period of about a day or so, it managed to import everything across into PeeWeeGo. What I only lost really was, was the comments that were on Flickr. But that was a, a really nice feature if you're coming from Flickr, that is. Then there's also no application programming interface or API on PhotoPrism, but it does have a feature like WebDAV Sync. So that will allow you to sync to files or photos that are sitting somewhere else on a server. Whilst on the PeeWeeGo side, API is a feature, and where that's been implemented already is things like applications, photo apps, like Digicam, Shotwell, Lightroom, iPhoto, and Aperture have all got support for directly creating albums and uploading photos with the comments, the descriptions, the tagging, the whole lot, straight into PeeWeeGo, as well as FTP file transfer. So again, PeeWeeGo is probably a bit more powerful on that aspect. Then I've just listed on both sides here the different file formats that are directly supported for imports. Movie obviously being, remember, the iPhone format. PeeWeeGo has got like for like largely, but including you'll see zip, but it doesn't support out of the box movie files. So on the iPhone side, what I had to do was I just had to use a handbrake application, that open source app to just to convert my movies to M4V, that's the format that I used. And then they are visible and perfectly usable inside PeeWeeGo. And the advantage also being they're a little bit more compact and faster as well. It's not a, a major problem, but if you're going to be importing lots and lots of movies, it could be a bit of a problem if they are in, in, in movie format. Obviously, if they MP4 or whatever the case is, you know, you really don't have any problem. It just imports and it runs. And then a last sort of a key difference it's a difference. It's not really a disability. Photoprism is based around progressive web app. So it means that you open the web address really in your browser on mobile. You then save that as a bookmark to the home page. And in the future, you just click on that icon. It'll open in the browser and operate pretty well much as you see it. You know, it's a benefit in a way because you're not having to maintain a native app with a slightly different interface, uh, you know, so it's got pluses and minuses. On the PeeWeeGo side, it's a specific native iOS and an Android app, and they work fairly well. Uh, one of the advantages, obviously, with the app being that the app can also automatically back up your photos to PeeWeeGo that you take on your mobile device. As I understand it, PhotoPrism is not such an issue. You can also obviously back up your photos. So I think on both sides, they, they're they fairly similar there. So let's just look at the viewer access. What I've done here is I've just taken a specific album that I did recently now for a cableway ride. We did up Table Mountain. And the view that you're seeing here is a viewer. So this is a shared view where the link has been sent to somebody and that person can do what you can see right here at the moment. So take this as, as being possibly then the public view. If you were to share your albums, this is the view that people would see. So what I've actually picked up with PhotoPrism is it doesn't seem to be designed for you log in as in Flickr and you see 20 of your albums and you drill through them and look at them and comment on them and so on. It seems to me that you will send out these links to family or friends or maybe you'll share it on social media, but this is the view people get. They can't really comment on it or, or do anything specific with, spe with specific own rights of theirs. So it's just to keep that in, in mind, really. I think if you create users, I'll just check this now again. I think they may be able to like it at least. But that's the view that you're going to see as a, as a public viewer. And if you open a photo up, you can, if you see, if you hover over it, you can see the description there as well. You've got a bit of EXIF info and so on underneath it. If you click in it, it opens up very quickly. So there's nothing sluggish about its... You'll see there is the description at the bottom. There's nothing sluggish really about its uh, processing or hosting side, should I say. It's more the importing and processing as the hoster that you'll pick that up. And I just wanted to show a video shot as well here. Um, oops. I think 
this is a video. And is it playing? Well, that's interesting. There's a little thing at the bottom. So. So the videos are pretty flawless. It works very nicely and it's pretty, pretty fast. And you'll see at the top here, you've really only got options for slideshow. You could zoom in and out a bit. You can go full screen. You could select this photo if you want to go and do a couple of things with it. You can also have options to download it as well. And you can just close and go back to it. That is really about it. And you'll see also here, there is also selections over there and it'll show you here at the bottom right that there's three selected if you click on it you as a viewer you can really only download those photos so that is about it for photo prism let's go to pwego for the same album uh, well okay pwego again now as i said it's going to be slightly different the difference here again is that you aren't logged in you can see there's an option at the top to log in but what you presented with is a site hosting various albums and what you're seeing at the moment here is the only the public albums there's the locations of the photos so you could go down also and see where the photos are but these are groups of albums so if you go down to for example my where's my places one there places you'll see it's got 51 albums in it the little indicator, by the way, on the bottom right of the of the album is shows that there's new photos uploaded. You click on places, you're now going to see a number of sub albums under it. So I'm going to go look at the same one, but you'll see a very a slight, you'll see it is a, a sort of a different interface really. So now you'll go into the album, and obviously for that particular album, the photos are all here on uh, top of Table Mountain in Cape Town. And you can go in closer and sort of see where the photos are, actually. It should show you a sort of a view. It's not showing the preview at the moment. But anyway, uh, this is a plugin, by the way, but also pops up a bigger view of the photos. So that's a plugin capability you've got. You've got a couple of options at the top also for things like just viewing most visited, best rated, recent photos. You can explore things. And there's a couple of tags as well related to the album. But if we now go in to have a look at the photo, you'll see here's the EXIF information displayed. It's got place as well for commenting at the bottom. There's an example of a comment. I made this comment as an anonymous user. Uh, there might be a little bit of a bug with the commenting at the moment because I've noticed. So I've got to approve these uh, anonymous comments. So they won't be posted directly to the website. You can allow that if you want to, but uh, the spam will kill you, quite honestly. You'll see there is place here to rate the photo. So you could rate it, say, as a four over there. That shows you the number of visits. There's not much else you can really do here. You can show the file metadata, but it's already there. And you can obviously go to next like this i just want to get back to the video it's a different video i suppose i can show this video so playing videos is pretty quick and easy actually as well in here but the one other thing i can show let me just have a look go back to if you go to a, you'll see this is, for example, a panorama view. So if you click on that, you'll see, look at that beautiful view. It's sort of animated panorama view, the viewer plugin that Pwego has got. But again, you're going to have to activate that plugin. And you can do some basic configuration for it. So that's really the panorama views. And I think also this one up here as well. So yeah, slightly different. So let's just go back to home. I'm just going to log into, oh, I need the login view. So this is a logged in view already. You'll see at the bottom left here, this is PhotoPRISM and I'm an admin user here. 
I've got two albums that I've imported already over here. You'll see you've got a summary here as well of how many albums, photos, moments, etc. If you see any odd photos here, what one thing I made a bit of a mistake was when on the Open Media Vault when I did the plugin and I installed it, I should have pointed this to its own separate directory, and I was one level up, so it's pulling a lot of like web-related stuff in. If you look at folders, for example, here, uh, you shouldn't be seeing some of this stuff, you know, over here. It's actually web web-based thumbnails and caching. So I'd actually have to reinstall this and just define that properly so that I don't have this sort of messing everything up really. But yeah, you've got, you can, you can look at favorited photos. Here it's got two people that it's recognized already that are named and you will see, you know, it, it does a pretty good job of doing that. You can look at just videos, album views. Let's go into that album. So here you'll see pretty well much the same. There is your option to like there with a little heart, like or unlike, you can select. And if you select photos now, you'll see here, these are your options. So not much more to download, uh, sorry, remove from album. You could add them to an album, a different album, in other words, probably. You could download them. You could mark them as private, or toggle them really to private or not. And there is a view over here on the left to see private photos. Or you could share them. And that is sort of pretty well much it. At the top here, you can edit the album. So I've got a name up the top and I've got a description there. You could share the album and that would be the album link to share it. And you could give it a secret and an expiry date as well if you want to. So it, it, uh, it's one quick and easy way to, to share publicly without the person having to install an application or create a user account or anything like that. But again, on PeeWeeGo's side, they've got something similar in a plugin. So it's not a complete difference, really. Well, you can download and you can toggle the view. So you can look at the view in you know, larger images or smaller. And you can obviously upload more photos as well if you want to. You can choose which album it's got to go to or create a new album and then just say upload. And that is really it for, for photos. Then we can, if I take a photo, for example, like this, you'll see I don't really have any manual control over adding face tags here or anything. So it's pretty well much automated. You've got, again, like we saw slideshow, zooming, full screen, favorite, you can select it. You have got an edit option now. So the edit option is going to give you some of the EXIF data that you can change or you can add notes to it over here. You have got the labels. So it's defaulted to certain things already, I think like public transport, but you could add other labels there. Okay, so now you'll see here, for example, the face was too small. So it just says here it didn't find people, but now you can't add it manually. So it could be a bit of a minus. And there's the file info over there. And you've got some other settings info. You can tag a few things as well, for example, to say it's a panorama, but I'm not picking up that it gives you anything really specifically different. I'll open the panorama view now and we can just have a look at that again. So it didn't pick up the face. If we take this face one over here and we now go to edit, people, you'll see the yes, it did identify it fine. So small faces is a problem. Let's just have a look at that one panorama photo again, which is, which one? It's not that one. Ah, oh, this one. So this one, if we go to edit, you'll see it is tagged, yes, as a panorama over here in the middle. But if I go back to it, I, I'm not seeing really any, any, oh dear. If we go back to the photo, I can zoom in a little bit and that seems to be all I've got. I don't really see any panorama functionality, you know, or, or, or sort of scanning or anything like that. So yeah, that's a bit of a, a bit of a downer there really. The only last thing really on photo prism probably to show is then really the settings. Under general settings, you have got some theme changes you can make there, language. You can 
You can deactivate a whole bunch of options as well here, or activate. So I've got everything activated, but you could deactivate, you know, uploading, importing, originals, logs, recognition of people. You can turn off if you want to, sharing, downloading. You've got moments that it will also use its AI for to create on the left over there. Places, so you can disable a bunch of those labels and so on. Uh, the style for streets, that is the map view. What map view do you get? Oh, I see there's an animation. Hmm, interesting. Let me, let me try that on medium. I didn't show you the, uh, the geo photo view, so I must just show that still. Then on the library, there's a couple of settings you can change. Convert to JPEG there as well. You can force it to do sequential naming when it imports. There's a number of other options. I've got the experimental options activated. The downscaling filter for the images, uh, something that Puigo also does. I also do downscale my photos quite a bit just to save space and so on. Raw, of course, if I recall correctly, Puigo, I don't think had raw imaging, but there's some control here you can also do for a raw imaging. There's your syncing with, with WebDAV. And then just your account settings that you've got over there. One thing I'm noticing here, and I said I wanted to check, was I don't see user management. So it doesn't seem to me you can add four or five or seven users for your family and then let them all like and comment. So it, I gather you set it up, you then just share your link to your family and they can like the photos. But yes, no commenting or anything at this stage. So let's just look at that geolocation. Here was the places I wanted to show. That's the animation down to where the photos are. And obviously, depending on your base map, I don't know why it's not picking up the base map. It did actually pick up the base map before. Oh, it's using OpenStreetMap, I see. Just go back here again. Uh, where was it now? Oh, offline, that's why. Sorry, it's supposed to be on, say, streets. Oh. Oh dear, that's a sponsor feature. Well, I did see it before. It's interesting that I now don't see it. Hybrid. Oh. Okay, well, there's a small little problem that you might pick up then with. Photo Prism, great. I also heard somebody had said that a deleting of photos was disabled. Well, I did find in the config file there was a thing that said delete equals false. I changed it to, to true and it did allow me to. Maybe it's the animation part. Ah, no. No. Wow. Okay, well, I don't know. So that's pretty bad. I definitely saw this before I changed the setting. So maybe if you don't play with the setting, you can get to use it. It does seem a bit pointless, quite honestly, without it. But anyway, because yeah, it had a very nice view and I did see the map in the background. But watch out for that. And then, as I said, the delete aspect, you might have to change that in the config file. So Photo Prism are definitely pushing you a lot harder towards at least a payment. So this is self-hosted. It seems to be you still have to become some form of a sponsor. I don't. I think you can do a minimum amount. Um, to, to get all the functionality. So let's have a look at PeeWeeGo then. I'm just going to log in. That's the logged in view. You can see here that your geotagging does actually work. If I go to that album, oops, that's Lion's Head. Zoom out. I'm not sure. There we go. There's the mountain. So you can, it's supposed to show you previews of these photos. That does normally. I don't know why it's not showing me the preview now. Maybe it's just not cached or something. But otherwise, it'll pop up little previews over there. So if I go to, ooh, where's places? Places. Obviously, you're seeing private albums here as well. You're not going to see on the public view. And there's Table Mountain. You'll see that it's already zoomed in on the geotagging. Uh, 
So the difference here really is if I go to here, hover over the face, you'll see there it shows Chantel's name. And that's because I have used this plugin called Mugshot. And you can sort of highlight anything that you want to, to highlight. It doesn't have to just be faces. You'll remember that Photoprism didn't actually pick up the face before. But here, you know, the manual maybe does sort of work out sometimes, I suppose. Then other little sort of differences you've got is you can also crop and do a couple of other basics here depending on again what plugins you know that you've got activated you can also define a center of interest for the photo you know if it's not the center of the photo and so on as well let's go back to So yes, you've also got change of sort order. You can display a calendar, display a calendar by creation date, add all photos to a collection. If you add to a collection, you've got a couple of options there. I've got one collection ready, but you can create a new user collection over there if you want to. So the difference really is going to be with Puiwigo. Um, I don't seem to recall what I actually edit or select photos here in this view. It's got a batch manager and photo manager. But what I can just say is that your theme, if you go to tools in the top right, you can change, you know, your various themes and so on as well. So this one bootstrap theme, unfortunately, also displays the page header or banner from the standard theme and you've got to sort of just disable that so sometimes these themes aren't going to play you know sort of too well with each other and your language checks and your couple of other things you can do you can change over there as well but the big thing probably is really under the administration side so if you go to home it shows you some pretty interesting stats Overall around your photos, you can see I've got 13,000 photos hosted, 257 albums, 5,800 tags. I've got about 20 users. That's mostly just family and friends that log in and comment and do their thing. 10.3 million pages seen, and it's using about 7.2 gigs of storage with a bit of a breakdown here. And then also just showing you what sort of activity you had, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Then under the photo management, you can obviously add photos, you can do ratings, tags, you can look at recent photos, and you've got a batch manager over here. So the batch manager, there's different ways of selecting photos, but maybe for the sake of simplicity, uh, you know, you can choose all videos, videos that have got a poster without, you can choose duplicates, you can choose photo spheres only, or whatever you want to have a look at. You can add a filter as well. Hang on. So I'll make it album. Let's choose this particular album. And I'll say refresh the photo set. Let's take out the caddy one, sorry. Fresh photo set. And there's my photos. You can obviously, it's grouped at the moment in so many in a view, but you can, you know, make it 20 or 50 or whatever the case is. And you've got some quick selections up here as well. But in essence, what you'll now really do is you can either edit the photos individually or just click on the photo to select, you know, individual photos that you want to. So, for example, you might have selected, let's take these ones over here where there's food in, for example. Oops, food. Once you've selected, you can go down to choose an action. And you'll see there's a lot more actions here. You could just delete those photos. You can associate them to an album. So another difference here is that a photo can belong to one or more albums. You can have a couple of other albums and the photos uploaded once, but you can associate it with those other albums and it'll appear virtually in them. You can move it to another album. You can dissociate. You can add tags, remove tags, set the author, title, creation date. Who can see the photos? Because remember, there's user management here. Synchronize metadata. Uh, you can rotate those images. You can write metadata. You can set them to being a photosphere or unset. You can also do geotag location. 
and videos. So for example, a typical one people will often do is say add tags. And there's a selection of all the tags I've already used, but you could say food. And you can either create a new one or you can choose one of the existing ones and you'll just say apply action. And there you go. Another one that's quite useful sometimes is, for example, geotag. And then you can just set your location, your coordinates there if you've got. Or you can zoom in on the map to wherever it's got to go and you can sort of touch it there and it's going to fill in those locations and you'll apply the action. And it's as easy as that to manually then uh, geotag the photo. So as I said, a lot more control. The other thing you can do is this is the group view. You can go from here or the global view. You can go to single mode view and I use this quite a lot. And now what I do is I go and edit each photo if I need to. I go and edit each photos individually. It's title, the creation date and time, who can see it. There's a couple of groups there already. You can see what I set up. You can add the tags. You can put a description in. You can do its geolocation and a couple of other features for, e for each one if you want to. And then all you do is when you've got that stuff done, you'll just say submit. And you'll move on to the next part of the group that, you, that you're working on. That's the batch manager. Really, really powerful batch manager, I think. So let me just unselect. That's pretty well much the photo side. And if you go to albums, you'll see here you've got a whole bunch of albums that some of these have got sub-albums. I don't want to open those, but say there's places there's places you'll see there's all the sub albums that are under places and you can move their sort order you can delete them if you want to it tells you how many photos there are you can add to it you can edit the album itself uh, sorry add photos to it you can from here click to visit the gallery you can change the sort order and so on as well so there's quite a bit of management or for example this one, you could also now go and add another sub-album. If I was over here, I'd add a sub-sub-album under the Table Mountain Cableway, for example. There's quite a bit you can do. You can also change properties. This just also sets the properties of the album, whether it's public or private, and which groups can then view that album. So it's groups, and then within the groups, you'll see you obviously go and add users individual users to each group as well as well as commenting downloading that sort of thing then user groups i'm let me just open this okay i'll just take out the email addresses obviously but this is some of the family that uh, belong to groups you can then you know add them to other groups remove them from groups and that's really how you you sort of manage them and you can also have a guest user as well and or add a new user over there. And then there's the actual group management. These are the groups that I've got created. So you can also have groups for like work colleagues if you want to, or friends or family, and then define who belongs to each one and what they can view by group. And then plugins. You can see these are the plugins that I've got active at the moment, and you can enable or disable them. You can also go and change certain settings for a plugin as well. Some of them have got settings that you can do. You can see which ones are deactivated. If you've got any problems, if you find you've added a plugin, don't go and add 20 plugins, add one or two. If you find there's any problems or issues, sometimes a plugin clashes or there's some other issue with the plugin, I'd recommend that you deactivate it and then just check if everything's all right or not. And then you know there's a particular problem maybe for, you know, that plugin and you've got to go fix something or either leave it disabled or go find out. I've, I've found that sometimes it's just a little glitch that you've got to do something and get it to work again. Checking for, for updates. And of course, I've mentioned about adding new plugins. So you can click on betas. You can look at the sort order as in last revisions. So these are the most recently updated. You can filter up here if you want to, but you'll see there are quite a few. Some are pretty, pretty useful 
plugins as well. And they are really as easy as add them and then go and activate them under, you'll find them under deactivated plugins. I'm not going to go through all of them, but they do greatly enhance the productivity for PeeWeeGo from look and feel, you know, to, to functions as well, all sorts of things. So that's really that. Then under tools, there's just some syncing options you've got there that you can adjust. Site manager, I think you could actually have multiple sites as well, if I remember correctly. I've just got a single site, so you're only seeing one at the moment. There's some history data as well, just looking at stats. You've got a couple of maintenance options as well, things like locking, updating, repairing and optimizing database, purge never used, purge sessions, so there's a couple there including your thumbnails and purging of the cache. You can also manage your comments here, so I would come here to approve comments I think as well that people have made. There's also album comments. So, oh, there's a pending one. So I'd have to go and have a look at that first before I go and activate it. Somebody's posted a, a link. And you see, I'm not going to, because I think I know what that is. Oh, did I need to reject it? There we go. Uh, this will be your update manager again. And then on config, this is where you'll do your banner, your page banner settings and so on. Default sort orders, permissions, some miscellaneous. Some of these will depend on what theme you've got as well. Photo sizes. This is when you import. So it'll be resizing after upload or not. You can leave it as originals. And what thumbnails and other things you wanted to create. You can have watermarks. You've got some... Uh, these are menu options you can activate or deactivate for the different views. And then comments as well, you could activate or deactivate. I, for example, oh, not uh, somewhere I had deactivated. Oh, I, yeah, I had one or two things on or off. I can't remember there now. So there again are certain menus that you can hide as well. Or just to simplify the interface, you've got languages. And you've got the theme. So these are some of the themes that I have got active at the moment. Bootstrap Darkroom is quite an advanced one, but sometimes there are little issues with it. So you, you have to just be careful what you activate with it really, but you'll see it's got quite a lot of more involved uh, settings. It's, it's a really nice theme. And obviously if you know CSS, you can customize it even further. And it's got a couple of basic social integrations as well. And then just these menus up the top, that we've got collections. That's if you're, you can jump straight to albums. We've shown tags, I think, already. Most visited, best rated, that sort of thing. But the other one was this, this map view. I didn't show you the sort of the proper map view. It's a more fuller map view which is different to the one we saw earlier on, actually. Because the other one's um, view was a bit limited, actually. So this one is a fuller view. And you'll see what's also nice. Okay, well, hmm, it's normally nice when this view is fresh. You actually do see the little images down at the bottom here. So... Yeah, apologies for that. I actually don't know why it's not working. So as you click on these things, it'll open with these blue things. You click, you do actually see the preview. I'm really not too sure it was working a bit earlier when I looked at it. And at the same time down here, you can also see a preview of the images. But, you know, what is nice, you can also select from here. So yeah, pity but that's not really working at the moment properly. But this is a nicer view to sometimes just do your your viewing in, you know. I just want to talk a little bit about the installation side then. This is showing you on Open Media Vault. This is what the Open Media Vault 
So Open Media Vault, for those of you that don't know, it's a sort of a NAS installation that you do on a, any sort of a server or computer. And it will allow you to do, it's, it's really primarily for file backups, I think, originally. But it's got a bunch of other plugins. And amongst other things, it installs a Docker system with Portainer to manage it and so on. And normally I use that on my home server to install Docker containers to host things at home. But then I also saw, wow, it actually has just got a straight Photo Prism plugin. You don't even have to use Docker or Portainer to install it. So if you've got Open Media Vault already for your file backups and your this and that at home, under, I think it is system, there's plugins, and you can choose, just activate the Photo Prism plugin. And then once you've activated it, this is a setting screen that comes up at the end. So this is all that you've got to set, really. You just click to enable it. By default, it's got a port number there. You can change that or leave it. If you've got SSL certs, you can choose it over here or install it from there as well by adding. And you can then choose if it's a public SSL or read-only. Uh, if you want to have a file limit, you can set it. And the important things here was I used my default data location for images and for application data. And that was just maybe a little bit of a mistake. What I should have gone and done was added new proper locations under storage in Open Media Vault and chosen them over here because I installed it for the root for all my data and my application data. And that's why you saw all those other odd folders coming up. So that's just something to bear in mind here before you finish this, rather go and create those storage areas first. And if you're going to do an import, you could also specify it over here. And then once you've saved that, that's it. You just go to the server address for your Open Media Vault and append the port 2342 on the end. And you log in with admin and admin. And that's it. And you're in, in Photo Prism. It's as easy as that, really. And then just to mention also that Photo Prism, it's got a Docker Compose file. It, it, what they do is they put a ton of stuff in it. It's, it's setting a lot of defaults. You don't actually have to worry about most of that. It does put, put a person off a little bit, but essentially it's only really your volumes that you need to, to set there. There are one or two good videos. I think DB Tech on YouTube has done a good video about how to install Photo Prism. So, you know, here's a video you can look at for if you want to have a install it properly on, on Docker. And it also will, you know, through Docker as well, it installs in various other NAS devices as well. So you've got a couple of options there. But the last thing I really want to show is really on the Photo Prism side. So I'll put a link below the video as well for this. This is my paste bin site. This is the Docker Compose file that I'm actually using. Maybe I should just, it's probably easier to view it in edit mode, I think, because then I can show you with the syntax highlighting. This is what I cut and pasted, is just this text into my portainer where you create a new stack. You give it a stack name, you dump this code in, and you hit deploy, and that will create your Docker container for you with the volumes and everything. So it's pulling this image over here. That's the Puigo Docker image. I obviously like setting the container name and the host name so it's got a fixed name and it doesn't assign random names. The environment you probably don't have to worry about, but you can set the user ID and the group user ID user there and set your time zone. The labels part is just a one that I've added for Watchtower to let me know if there's any updates to the container. I then do them Date them manually by just recreating it, but that you, that you won't necessarily need to use if you're not using Watchtower. And the important part really is the volumes. Now, this is going to differ for you. Remember, the right side of the colon never change that. That is the internal mapping inside the container. So, as far as it's concerned, its slash config folder will be mapping to your what in my case I just called it a volume called Pwego App Data. And it points down to here where Pwego App Data it will be named Pwego App Data. So it'll create that for me on outside of the Docker container. It'll be a volume. That obviously is where user app data is going to be created and stored. What you import is going to go into Pwego Gallery, which is the other volume here. And internally it's called slash gallery. So obviously that the, the beauty of that is that you are able to back up any of that data that you've changed settings, you know, and the actual photos and albums.
that you've created. I'll put a comment in here about the network ports because I've got them actually commented out. And the only reason for that is I've got another video and I'll put a link up above here as well. That video explains how I'm using ports without creating. And remember again on the right hand side, that's the internal port 80 that the container listens to on the inside. But the external port in my case would have been 1890. I'm not going to create that because it punches holes in the firewall. So I use Nginx proxy, which addresses the container by its name, Piwigo. So I don't specify any IP address or any ports to get to Piwigo. And that's why I've commented it out. If you're not using that type of setup, then you will just still have ports in there. Whatever you want is an external port that you want to use in your browser. And you always leave the port on the right as is. Otherwise, your container won't hear anything. It won't respond. And in my case as well, I have got a custom network that I'm using. Um, I've given it the name MySQL Net. It's just because I'm sharing one network as well because I've got all my databases shared in one container. And that's really the only reason why I've got it there. You probably won't have to worry with that. It might just be set to default. So the most important things when you're creating PWGO really are, most of this will be default, is volumes. You just got to worry about volumes and your network ports mostly. And then, you know, once you've done that and you've deployed the container, you can just go to the, well, in this case, you'd go to the IP address with the port 1890, and you should be up and in your PWGO and log in and, and off you go. So that really is it. I just wanted to try a show there that, you know, they both do something similar, but they do it in a different way. So you can see very clearly that if you want to make a more public facing replacement for something like Flickr, then PeeWeeGo is definitely going to be your better bet. But if it's just for family and friends and they just want to look at a few pictures and, and a nice interface and all the rest of it, then, you know, PhotoPrism probably does a better job again in that regard. And there are also various other applications as well. This was not a comparison of what I think is the two best ones at all. It was just the two that I've been considering. And I thought it might be interesting for others to, or especially if you're considering one or other of these that you, you know, want to actually have a, that you actually want to consider possibly. Installation, as you saw, both of them really are, are Docker or can be Docker. And there are lots of other videos out there going through the step-by-step -step process for setting them up because everybody's setup is always also a little bit different. And I don't want to make this video now into a double length uh, video. So yeah, I hope you found that sort of interesting. If you were wondering about photo album managers, you've at least got a taste for what is possible on both of them. And yeah, stay safe out there and I'll see you in my next video.